So here we are back again for color space. What on earth does that mean? Well, color space is a label that defines the colors and the type of colors that are going to be used and the range of colors. The problem for most of us is if we took any art classes in high school or even grade school, we were taught, and most of us remember, that the primary colors were red, yellow, and blue. The problem was that color system, the red, yellow, blue system, was designed for mixing paint, for mixing pigments. And it didn't even work all that well there, but it was pretty close. Yes, if you mixed red and yellow, you got orange. If you mixed red and blue, you got purple. You mixed blue and yellow, you got kind of a green. But what was supposed to happen is if you mixed all of them, you got black. And you didn't. What you got was this horrible, awful, monkey barf, brown, brownish, yuck color. So if you wanted real black, what you had to do was buy black paint that was usually a carbon pigment paint. Well, that type of system isn't going to work in the electronics world. We need something precise, predictable, and usable. So we have a system where the primary colors are red, green, and blue. Thanks to Isaac Newton and his experiments uh, with his prism, we know that real color, transmitted color, is red, green, and blue primarily. And in this system, theoretically, if you mix pure hues of red, green, and blue where they overlap, you get white. And the amazing thing is, you actually do. You get white light. You take a true white light source and break it up, it becomes red, green, and blue in colors of the rainbow. If you take those colors and remix them in a prism, prism you get white. Now, I grew up in the painting world, and for me, the idea that you can mix red and green and get yellow is just mind-numbing. I mean, I can never get my mind around that. But it's the truth, and it works every time. So within that RGB system, within that broader system, how do we find different color spaces? Well, we usually see this arranged as a color wheel. In most textbooks, um, you will see this. If this were a textbook for painting, you would have a different looking color wheel. For us, we have this color wheel where our primary colors, the red, green, and blue, form the main triangle. And secondary colors are cyan, magenta, and yellow. There are also what are referred to as tertiary colors that from our standpoint now, working to control color are less important. But in terms of using color, understanding how colors are made and what colors work together, seeing these tertiary colors on this color wheel can be really important for you. So if we turn this color wheel sideways, what we realize is that each color, and in this case blue, also can have a luminosity rating. The color wheel shows it at its most pure color. But if we add black or we add white, or if in the digital world we add or de decrease the light, then we get a luminosity range from dark to light, with the color wheel representing that color that's right in the middle, the most pure, the most saturated part of the color. Color space refers to how many colors a given medium can render compared to typical human vision. Those colors can have both luminosity and chromacity. Luminosity is how bright is it from black to white. This is often called the shade of the color from dark to light. It has chromacity. What is the color? Sometimes called a the hue. Is it red or blue? Color space is primarily about the chromacity 
of the color. What color is it? Various color spaces are around and are rendered graphically so we know what we're talking about to give us a sense of how they compare. But they all are derived from this called lab space or LAB space. It represents all of the colors the typical human eye can identify. In the lower point of it, you'll see numbers there. They end in 380, but right at the corner, that number should be 400. In the far corner, that number is 700. Those represent the wavelengths in nanometers that these colors represent in the electromagnetic spectrum. The problem is if we try to represent colors using that spectrum, which is just a line, we have no way to render those colors that we can see here that are a mix of the 400 nanometer colors and the 700 nanometer colors. But here with this type of graphic, we can see what those colors would be. sRGB, and the S comes from Sony, is the color space that can be rendered more or less accurately by television. This was the space initially created for the Sony Trinitron. It can be represented accurately by the web, computers, email, other computer-based applications. The problem is that space inside the triangle represents around 30 to 35 percent of the colors that the human eye can actually see. That's not very much. Look at what's outside of that triangle. Those are colors that we can see, but which cannot be rendered properly in sRGB. Well, that wasn't good enough for Adobe. So Adobe created a color space called, cleverly, Adobe RGB. It's a larger color space that can be rendered more or less accurately by a lot of printers. And most of your cameras these days, especially the higher end cameras, will allow you to set them so that they capture in either sRGB or Adobe RGB. You want to set your camera to capture in Adobe RGB. You want it to capture in the broadest possible color space that you can. We can bring stuff down later, but we can't expand it easily. There are other color spaces that are used by photographers. The one that is used most often because it's much richer in warm colors is Pro Photo RGB. Problem is, at the moment, no camera can capture Pro Photo. But it is used a lot in editing, and we'll convert our files to that Pro Photo RGB space in the um, camera raw converters, which is another reason we want to be shooting in raw. But again, if your camera allows it, set the color space to Adobe RGB. This will capture the widest range of colors available to it. Occasionally, you'll see CMYK as a color space label. It's a real color space. It's a cyan, magenta, yellow, and black but it's reserved for images destined for reproduction on printing presses. If we were producing images for magazines, for brochures, for catalogs, for that kind of thing, then we're going to have to get concerned about CMYK space. For right now, don't worry about it. Put all of your effort into understanding RGB space.